Hey everyone, it's John here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my top 10 favorite formula tips in Excel. If you wanna follow along with this video, you can download the workbook that I'm using with the link below. Otherwise, let's get into it. This first tip is going to allow you to quickly add totals into your reports. So normally what you might do is add a sum formula, and then you're gonna to need to reference the column that you wanna sum, and then you could copy and paste that formula over and then repeat the process for the row totals here as well. But there's a much quicker way, so let's just undo that. So what you wanna do is just select your entire range and then you can use the auto sum keyboard shortcut, Alt equals, and that's going to automatically add those sum formulas for you. So now what we've got here if we press F2 and edit that, you can see that it's totaling the entire row. And down here, what we've got, if we press F2, you can see that we've got the total of the entire column. In this next tip, we're gonna take a look at using tables for dynamic references in your formulas. So here we've got two sets of the same data. And for this one here, we're going to create a table for it. So let's select the data and go up to the Insert tab and use the Table command. And we're going to click OK. And that's going to create a table for our data set. And then we're going to name this table so we can go up to the Design tab. And right now it's just named Table 5 by default. Let's change that to Sales and press Enter. And now we've got a table named Sales. And let's see what happens when we add a formula referencing these sales so let's create a sum of our sales values and press enter. And now let's do the same thing with our data set that's not inside a table and reference those sales. And let's say that now we have some new data to add to our data set. Then what we're going to have to do for this is edit the formula and change the range reference to include that new data and press enter and there we've got our total now. But with the table, all we need to do is add our new data into the table object and our formula is now going to include that data. So here you can see that we are referencing the sales column in our sales table by name and when we add the new data into the table, it's also included in that reference. In this next tip, we're going to see that you can use tables to automatically fill down your formulas. So here we've got a table, and in this column here, we wanna add the amount, which is just going to be the quantity times the price. So let's add that formula in. And when we press enter, you're going to see that the formula has been filled across the entire column. Now we have options here, so we can undo that calculated column. And we can also stop automatically creating our calculated columns. Or we can also open up the options menu and turn that off here. Now, if you don't see that option here after you create a calculated column, then you can open that up from the File tab and go to Options. And you're going to find it in Proofing under Autocorrect Options in the Auto Format as you type tab. And then you can turn that on or off from here. Now, when you add new data into your table, then that formula is also going to be added into your new rows. In this tip, we're going to see how you can easily edit your formula references. So let's press F2 to edit our formula. And here we've got an XLOOKUP function, and it's referencing the wrong thing. So here we should be looking up our product from our table. So we can click and drag that to the correct location. And we're also missing items from our lookup table. So we can click and drag the corners here and extend those ranges down and press enter. And now our formula is working correctly. And we can 
click and drag our fill handle and copy and paste that formula down. In this tip, we're going to see how we can select all formulas in a sheet. So if you press Control G, that's going to open up the Go To menu. And you can click on Special from here. And this is going to give you the option to select formulas. And we can press OK. And now all our formulas in this sheet are selected. And we can maybe change the color of those cells so that users will know that we've got formulas in there. Another option to find formulas visually is with control tilde. And that's just going to show formulas in the grid instead of showing the value that they evaluate to. And so now here we can see our formulas in the grid. And we can toggle this on or off with control tilde. So if we press that again, then we're going to go back to seeing our values. In this tip, we're going to see how we can apply named ranges to existing formulas. So here we've got a formula that's just calculating the future value with various interest rates and number of years. And you can see that it references a principal value at the top here in cell C3. And if we select this cell, we can actually name this cell to make the formula easier to read. So in our name box, let's name this cell to principal. And let's press enter. And now that cell has a name. But if we look at our formula, it's still referencing cell C3 and not the name of the cell. So if we want to update our existing formulas with the new name, what we can do is go to the Formulas tab. And if we click on the arrow next to the Define Names button, then there's the option to apply names. Let's select that. And we're going to select the name that we just created and press OK. And now we can check out our formulas and we can see that it's using the name of that cell instead of the address now. In this tip, we're going to see how we can add line breaks into our formulas to make them more readable. So first, let's just extend our formula bar a little bit. And we can then click into our formula at the location we want to add a line break. And if we press Alt-Enter, that's going to add in the line break. And we can repeat this process wherever we like. And with longer formulas, this is definitely going to help with readability and making them easier to understand. In this tip, we're going to see how we can use the let function to create comments within a formula. So here we have a formula that calculates the grade based on a percentage. Let's just edit this and wrap it within a let function. Now what the let function allows us to do is create variables and assign values to those variables within a formula. And so for this, what we're going to do is just create a comment variable. And then within a text string, we're going to add our comment. And let's add a comma after that. So that's just to find a variable and value pair within the let function. And we can also create a variable for our actual calculation. So let's call this one result. And the value that we want to return from our let function is the result and not the comment. So that's going to be our last argument is the value we want to return. And when we press enter, we get the same calculation, but now we've got this comment variable in our formula. In this tip, we're going to see how we can install the advanced formula environment. So this is an add-in that's going to improve the editing and auditing experience as compared to the regular formula bar in Excel. So we can install this add-in by going to the Home tab and add-ins over here. And then we're going to go to More Add-ins, and that's going to open up this Office Add-ins menu. And we're going to search for Excel Labs. And let's press Enter. And then we can add this add-in here. Click on the Add button and Continue. And that's going to open up this add-in Excel Labs on the right side of the window pane. 
and this is going to give you a significantly better experience in formula writing. In this tip, we're going to take a look at the debug tools in the Advanced Formula Environment add-in. So here we've got a formula in the grid, and if we want to see exactly what's going on with our calculation, we can click on the debug tool, and then we're going to see the result of our calculation here at the top, and then we're going to be able to step into our formula and explore exactly what's going on. So here we can see all the values used within our conditions. So here our score is 67% and the condition in the if function is testing if that's greater than 80%. In our next step, we can see that that condition is false. Same with the condition in our next if function. And in the third if function, we can see that the condition is actually true. And as a result, we get C as our grade. So that's the debug tool, which allows you to go step by step through your calculations. So those are my top 10 favorite formula tips in Excel. Did you know them all? Let me know in the comments. Maybe you have a formula tip that's even better and should have been added to the list. Let me know that in the comments as well. That's it for this video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.